Sawete omnes. If you'd like to support the channel along with these patrons, there's a link in the description box below. In this lesson, we'll go through a passage from Lingua Latina that is just filled with participles. But this is a passage intended for practice with participles, so it's not necessarily recommended to speak this way. Also, the declination of participles was covered in a previous video, linked in the upper corner and in the description, so I won't go over that here. The participles in this lesson are all present active participles, which just means that they are verbs that change into adjectives, just like the adjectives sleeping, singing, shouting, etc. First, let's review the verbs that will be turned into participles in this passage. Wigilare, which will mean awake. Yakere, will become lying down. Kanere, singing, like canter or chant. Clamare, making a clamor or shouting. Excitare, will mean to wake someone up. And a gallus is a rooster. Okay, let's go through the passage now. Puer wigilans in lecto jacens gallum canentem audit. Gallus canens non auditur a puero dormiente. Puer dormiens serum clamantem audit. Nec a gallo canente, sed a servo clamante excitatur. Non vox galli canentes, sed vox servi clamantes, puerum dormientem excitat. Pueri vigilantes gallos canentes audiunt. Galli canentes a pueris dormientibus non audiuntur. Pueri dormientes servos clamantes audiunt, nec ab gallis canentibus, sed a servis clamantibus excitantur. Non voces gallorum canentium, sed voces servorum clamantium, pueros dormientes excitant. Okay, let's take a look at what these participles mean now. Puer wigilans in lecto jacens gallum canentem audit. The first two participles are both in nominative form because they are both modifying the boy. This would be more clear if we didn't have wigilans because it would mean the boy lying in bed. And the singing rooster is what the boy hears, so both words are in the accusative. So we have the boy lying awake in bed hears the crowing rooster. Gallus canins non auditur a puero dormiente. Here, crowing rooster is nominative because this sentence is passive and sleeping boy is ablative. Remember, participles use third declension endings after the nt, so the crowing rooster is not heard by the sleeping boy. Okay, it's going to get more difficult now. Try to fill in the participles in this sentence. Puer dormiens serum clamantem audit, nec a gallo canente, sed a servo clamante excitatur. The sleeping boy hears the shouting servant, and is woken not by the crowing rooster, but by the shouting servant. Do you recognize what declensions we need in this sentence? Non vox galli canentes, sed vox servi clamantes, puerum dormientem excitat. The first two participles are in genitive form, which ends in is, making this mean, it is not the voice of the crowing rooster, but the voice of the shouting servant that wakes the sleeping boy. Now let's try some plural forms. Pueri vigilantes gallos canentes audiunt. For the plural form, the endings for the accusative and nominative form are the same, as we can see here. 
Try the next sentence. Gali canentes a pueris dormientibus non audiuntur. This is the plural ablative form, so this means the crowing roosters are not heard by the sleeping boys. And finally, try to fill in these participles. Non voces galorum canentium, sed voces servorum lamantium, pueros dormientes excitant. Here, these first two are the plural genitive form. So we have, it is not the voices of the crowing roosters, but the voices of the shouting servants that wake the sleeping boys. Okay, let's try a few related sentences that were not in the passage. Try to decline the participles. Puer dormiens nihil audit. The sleeping boy hears nothing. Mater puerum dormientem excitat. The mother wakes the sleeping boy. In aurem pueri dormientes lamat Marque. She shouts in the ear of the sleeping boy, Marcus. And for the next sentence, do you remember the word for to fly in Latin? Volare. Try to fill in these participles now. Canis animal volans non est, animalia volantia sunt aves. Remember, animal is a neuter noun, and the accusative and nominative forms of neuter nouns are the same. The plural of these two forms is the only ending that is different from the masculine and feminine endings in the third declension. They end in ia, as we see here. And the singular forms both end in ns. So how did you do? Don't worry if you didn't get all of them correct. Participles take a while to master, and you can always come back and watch this video again. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share, and if you can, help support the channel on Patreon, where there are audio downloads and transcripts of each dialogue and story. Gratias!